Hi, it's May 26th and I have a mystery for you to solve with something in this box that's the main character of the story. It's not alive, but it is the main character of the next book I'm going to read. And clue number one is it's circular. It's in the shape of a circle. Could be a lot of things. Um, a bracelet? It's not a bracelet. But it has to fit in here, so basketball? No, no. A tambourine? Good guess. Won't fit. I tried. Clue two. It is sweet. Now that could be a cookie, right? It's not a cookie. Or an M&M? Or a warhead? It's not those things. But you're on the right track if you're thinking about food and sweet. This one will give it away. There's a hole in the middle. You got it? And sprinkles on the top, right? It's a donut because this is, oh, it looks so good. I'm not going to eat it. I'm going to read the story. Here he is. Look, it's Arnie. Arnie the Donut by Laura Keller, and it looks just like him. This is a really fun story, and I know it's some people's favorites. There's a lot of words on every page, and I will do my best to read the most important ones, but this is one of those books that you have to get your hands on so you can really, really study the pages. Here we go. Arnie turned out to be just the kind of donut he had hoped he'd be. He was chocolate covered with bright colored candy sprinkles. And he stood there and he said, look at all my sprinkles, there must be a million of them. Over here, this person is saying, well, actually there are only 135 sprinkles, but I'm not going to spoil it for him. Those are the kind of things on every page. There's so many. Arnie was made early in the morning at Downtown Bakery, home of the best donuts around. Get it? Around? Arnie was proud to be one of the best. He knew that people all over town made special trips to the bakery just to buy donuts of their very own. As Arnie sat on the tray, which had just been placed in the donut case, he took a moment to reflect on the amazing things that had happened to him just that morning. First, he was cut into a ring, deep fried, cooled, iced, sprinkled, and named. Wow. And then he looked around him and saw all sorts of donuts sitting nearby. Long Johns, Crullers, Powdered Donuts, Cinnamon Twists, Jelly Filled, Plain, an Eclair, and even a Cream Filled. He tried to talk to the apple fritter. Hey, how about that deep fryer? Uh, are you any relation to Larry Fritter? Uh, Want to count my sprinkles? And then he said, you know, it is rather early. Maybe she's just not a morning donut. Well, it was 6 a.m. And the sign hung in the store window and it said, open. Arnie was fascinated as he watched the customers stream into the bakery one by one. Donuts were being chosen and placed in paper bags and whisked away with their new owners. Some went by the dozen in giant boxes. This is so exciting. I wonder who's going to choose me, he said. Just then, Arnie looked up and saw a man pointing right at him. <gasps> Moi, he said. Before he could say another word, he was pulled from the tray and put in a paper bag of his very own. Thank you, Mr. Bing. Have a nice day, Arnie heard the baker say to the man. Mr. Bing. Why, that's a fine name, Arnie decided. I can hardly wait to meet him. 
The ride to Mr. Bing's apartment was a little bit bumpy. Arnie was grateful for the soft napkin the baker had so thoughtfully placed underneath him in the bag. He had never ridden in a car and he wished he could look out the window to see all the sights. But more than anything, he wished he could meet Mr. Bing. Why is he keeping me in this bag? Arnie wondered. Finally, the car came to a stop and they were home. Mr. Bing carefully removed Arnie from the paper bag and placed him on a clean, shiny plate. Oh, what a handsome plate, Arnie said to himself. I'm not crazy about the design. I prefer a more modern look, but it's nothing a little paint can't fix. Mr. Bing gently lifted Arnie from his new plate. Isn't that cute, thought Arnie as he closed his eyes and smiled. He wants to hold me. What do you think's going to happen next? I don't think Arnie knows. And Arnie relaxed in Mr. Bing's hand and he felt himself moving higher and higher away from his plate. And when he opened his eyes to see where he was going, he discovered he was heading right straight for Mr. Bing's open mouth. <sighs> That's what a donut's for, isn't it? What are you doing? shouted Arnie. Mr. Bing was stunned. He dropped Arnie back onto the plate. I was, I was going to eat you, he said. Eat me? Arnie shrieked. Why would you do a thing like that? Do you make a habit of eating all of your house guests? Uh, no, of course not. Well, why then did it suddenly occur to you to eat me? Arnie demanded. Well, because you're a donut, and that's what donuts are for, to eat. Do you mean to tell me you've done this before? Oh, uh, yes, I eat a donut every day, Mr. Bing said sheepishly. And that is when Arnie froze. He felt sick and frightened and angry. Well, that explains why my friends never write or call. They've probably all been eaten, he said. He thought to himself for a moment, I must put a stop to this right away. I'll call the bakery and warn the others. Who's ever left, that is. Arnie knew that there was no time to write. And he needed to be very sneaky in order to keep his plan from Mr. Bing. He turned to Mr. Bing and he said in his sweetest voice, Excuse me, sir, but... Um, I don't believe we've been properly introduced. My name is Arnie. And Mr. Bing said, Um, hello, Arnie. I'm Mr. Bing. It's nice to eat you. I mean, meet you. Mr. Bing, would you be a dear and allow me to use your telephone? He asked very politely. Um, well, okay, said Mr. Bing, and he handed Arnie the phone. And as quickly as he could, Arnie, Arnie dialed the number of the bakery. And the baker answered the phone, down, down bakery, home of the best. Mr. Baker man, Arnie frantically whispered, this is Arnie the donut. Do you remember me? You made me at 515 this morning and I was bought about 20 minutes ago by a man who goes by the name of Mr. Bing. Yes, Arnie, the baker said, what can I do for you? Well, now I don't want to alarm you, but just moments ago, that man tried to eat me. And not only that, he claims to have eaten hundreds of us. I'm going to have to make a run for it, but I wanted to warn you so that if you see him coming, you can stop him. Oh my, Arnie, I thought you understood. That's what I make donuts for. I make them for people to eat. I can't believe it, Arnie gasped. Are the other donuts aware of this arrangement? Well, I think so, the baker said. Let me ask to be sure. <laughs> oh, goodness. The baker yelled, Hey, do you donuts know that you're going to be eaten? Oh, sure. Yeah, we know. We're delicious. People love us. C'est magnifique. Try us yourself. Did you hear that, Arnie? Well, Arnie was crushed. The phone dropped from his hand. He'd heard all he needed to hear. 
Arnie forgot all about his plan to escape. He collapsed back onto the plate, glanced up at Mr. Bing and said, All right then, get it over with. Go ahead and eat me. Mr. Bing gazed down at Arnie. Well, I, I'm not going to eat you, Arnie, he said reassuringly. I, I just wouldn't feel right about it now. Really? Arnie said with a huge sigh of relief. Oh, I'm glad to see that you've come to your senses. But since I'm not going to eat you, I'll, I'll have to figure out something else to do with you. Um, I paid good money for you. I don't want to be wasteful. Oh, no, of course not, said Arnie. What we need to do is make, make a list of things that I can do with you instead of eating you. Uh, between the two of us, I know we'll come up with something. Good plan, Mr. Bing, Arnie said. That will be a breeze. I bet I'm good at lots of stuff. And they both feverishly wrote down their ideas. And when they were finished, Mr. Bing asked, Would you like to read yours first? Sure thing, Mr. Bing, Arnie answered. Things Mr. Bing can do with me instead of eating me. First, do you need a ballroom dance partner? Um, no, I don't dance. How about could you use a personal fitness trainer? Hmm, I'd get too sweaty. How about a portrait painter? Oh, heavens no. Would you like me to entertain at parties? I don't like throwing parties, said Mr. Bing. Uh-oh. How about I could be your chauffeur? But you can't see over the steering wheel. How about I'd make a great bodyguard? Uh, who would you protect me from, a cookie? All righty, Mr. Bing, let's hear what you came up with. Okie dokie. I just know you're going to like some of these. Things I can do with Arnie instead of eating him. Well, I could use you as a pin cushion. Oh, oh, no, too painful. How about an air freshener for my car? How about not? How would you like to be a picture frame? I don't think so. I need a bowling ball. Ah, don't look at me. Ouch. You would make a fine paperweight. Boring. Then what about a doorstop? Try again. But there was nothing else on Mr. Bing's list. They were both completely out of ideas. Hmm. Arnie and Mr. Bing were exhausted. They felt terribly disappointed. And after a few minutes of awkward silence, Mr. Bing finally spoke. I'm sorry, Arnie, but it is clear that we can't agree on anything for you to do around here. It's difficult for me to say, but I think it would be best if, if you just found another home. I know, said Arnie, fighting back tears. I'll just be on my way then. Is it all right if I keep this napkin to pack up my loose sprinkles? Of course, Mr. Bing replied sadly. As soon as I get a job, I'll pay you back the money you spent on me. Oh, that's not necessary, Arnie. Arnie shook Mr. Bing's hand and thanked him for his kindness. And Mr. Bing opened the door. And as Arnie left, he paused and said, I guess donuts really are only good for eating, aren't they? They both waved goodbye and Arnie was gone. Mr. Bing stood at the window and watched as Arnie walked away. He walked past the flower beds, the mailboxes, and the apartment manager's office. He passed the tennis court, the swimming pool, and the clubhouse. But when Arnie reached the no dogs allowed sign at the end of the driveway, Mr. Bing suddenly came up with a new idea. I've got it. Arnie, Arnie, wait up, yelled Mr. Bing. Mr. Bing ran after him. Arnie turned back and stopped. And when Mr. Bing caught up with him, he was out of breath. I can't believe I didn't think of this earlier, Mr. Bing panted. Arnie. I've always wanted a dog, and I could never have one because they're not allowed here. See? No dogs allowed. No donuts allowed. Miss Arnie perked up when he realized what Mr. Bing was thinking. No dogs allowed. No donuts allowed. What? Would you like to take walks and play fetch? Well, sure I would. Can you do tricks like rolling over? Oh, rolling over, look at me. I was made for rolling over. Well, then, there's only one thing left to ask. Arnie, 
Would you be my donut dog? Oh, Mr. Bing, I would love to be your donut dog. And Arnie and Mr. Bing had so much fun together. Arnie was the best pet Mr. Bing could ever have hoped for. And Mr. Bing was Arnie's best friend. And they took the beware of dog sign and they put some more letters in there. So it really now says beware of donut. And that is the end. That's a good story and it's mostly just funny. So when I asked some kids, what, what's the lesson we learned? I had one student answer. They said, if you really want something and you want it badly enough, you have to just keep trying and thinking, which means don't give up. And I can make a joke. Donut give up. Get it? Donut give up. Do not give up. Oh my goodness. And then we just all agreed last year when we read this story that you should just learn from this book how to eat a donut or how to make sure you never make your donut mad. Step one, you hold it in your hand and you look at it and you ask it, do you mind if I eat you? And then step two, you listen carefully and you wait a few seconds. Step three, if it doesn't say anything, you just go ahead and eat it. Awesome. See you till next time.